Just like it's mini made, high tech four, renegade, 24, number eight. Coach, she fade away. All this is 11 grade, still in school, let them hate. Defenses. With the third pick in the NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Jaron Jackson Jr. If you guys been with me for a minute, you should know that I'm an Atlanta Hawks fan. So that means my NBA life as a fan has been really depressing. <laughs> Atlanta really hasn't had a franchise player since like the 80s and 90s, my boy. Literally, just about every other team in the NBA has had a franchise type player on their roster. The Brooklyn Nets, Darren Williams, the 76ers, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. The Sacramento Kings, the Marcus Cousins, and now they finna get Luka Doncic. The Phoenix Suns, Devin Booker, now they finna get DeAndre Ayton too. You see what I'm saying? Like, why we gotta be left? So I believe the Hawks should take Jaron Jackson Jr. Now before you Hawks fans spaz out, let me tell you why. I swear to y'all man, I believe Jaron Jackson Jr. is the most slept on lottery pick. Why you may ask? Well it's probably because he didn't throw out eye popping stats in college. He only averaged 11 and 6 in 22 minutes of play. And he only attempted about 6 shots per game in college. And nearly half of those attempts were threes. So he really didn't get a bunch of opportunity. Because he'd often put himself in foul trouble and that would limit his minutes. But if we take a look at his skill set, his game perfect translates into the NBA today. Darren Jackson Jr. is the best defender and three-point shooting big in this draft. He shot nearly 40% from three this year on nearly three attempts per game. He completely blows on every other big in the lottery and that includes DeAndre Aiden and Marvin Bagley in that category. So not only does his shooting stand out, but this man is an absolute terror defensively. Jaren has a knack for defense. He averaged three blocks a game in just 22 minutes of play this year. So he's also one of the best rim protectors in this draft. And even if he's away from the rim, he's still has an ultra positive effect on defense because he can guard smaller players extremely well due to his mobility. So in two of the biggest, most important aspects of today's NBA, Jaron Jackson excels at shooting threes and defense. Jaron Jackson is also a really underrated passer as well. He's literally every single thing you'd want out of your starting center in today's NBA. The Hawks should really consider Jaron Jackson Jr. So right now, the Hawks only really have two players who are going to be a part of our long-term plan. Since Dennis Schroeder is kind of acting like a hoe right now. <laughs> Kidding. But yeah, anyways, one of the players that are going to be a part of our future long term is John Collins. And John could really use Jaron Jackson Jr.'s defensive presence along his side because John himself isn't really a strong defender. So these two would feed off of each other extremely well on offense and defense since Jaron can shoot that three. This front court right here could do serious damage in the NBA in a few years to come. So to the Atlanta Hawks, I'm going to tweet y'all this video. And if you actually watch it, first off, send your boy some tickets for the culture. <laughs> Not for real though, like for real, send me some tickets. But seriously, Jared Jackson Jr. is the way to go. He's only 18 years old. Me and him are the same age. He's one of the youngest players in this draft. His potential is out the roof. And to be real, I'm not gassing him up or anything, but I can see this man averaging something like 15 and 8 or 15 and 7 in his first year in the NBA with more opportunity given to him. That's all I'm gonna say about him, man. Hawks fans, if you still don't want Jared Jackson Jr., you sleep. You so sleep, bro. As you can see, 18-year-old Mojo99 had high hopes for Jaron Jackson Jr. and his future NBA career. There was almost nothing not like about him as a prospect, and so far throughout his NBA career, he's proven that. The combination of agility and mobility is also stunning. That separates him from most his size and his position. Then you can go ahead and throw in his three-point sniping ability and also his creation abilities for himself. Yes, while all those things are awesome, they literally mean nothing. Nothing if he can't capitalize on those things on a consistent basis. Health is the biggest detriment to this man's NBA career for real. Most amount of games he's played throughout his three-year NBA career was 58 games, and that was in his rookie year. Since then, we've seen him on the court less and less which of course has led him to become a second thought. And there's no way in hell people could forget about him because he's on the Grizzlies and one of the league's biggest attractions is John Moran. When I think of John Moran in the NBA and for most NBA fans, I think of this man as an object, a big nice ride, something at a fair or a carnival. The main reason why people quite literally show up to this carnival is for this specific ride. If this ride ain't working, then no one's showing up. You think I want to watch the Grizzlies just to watch Steven Adams go ahead and clog the paint and average eight boards a game? No! Hell no! And because John's that dude, it just puts even more pressure on Jaron Jackson Jr. To go ahead and becomes that dude dude, that dude's sidekick, that dude's budding star, that dude's Robin to his Batman, his Chris Middleton to Giannis Antetokounmpo. Jaren is supposed to have that type of classification in the NBA sooner than later. And I think that this is the season where he finally 
gets the attention that he deserves. Jaron Jackson Jr. has never had a full offseason with no type of rehab or recovery involved. This past offseason, he was not trying to get to his old self or get back to a certain point. He got a chance to finally build on his game. Plankton! Hey, I was watching that. That was the old script. This script was written way back before the season even started and Lord, I'm so happy that I didn't decide to go ahead and post this video because Jaron Jackson Jr. is not playing like the Jaron Jackson Jr. I thought he was going to play like. If I was to go ahead and predict Jaron Jackson Jr.'s averages for the full season, I'm so happy that I didn't do that in my predictions, but if I was to go ahead and predict such a thing, I was gonna go ahead and say he averaging 21 points per game, bro. He gonna go ahead and get you seven to eight rebounds per game because we all know that, that, that that's never been a part of his game for real. But the three-point shooting has been, he was gonna damn near be a 40%, 39% three-point shooter, averaging 21 and eight, and also shooting 50% from the field. Helping Jaw carry this load, this super heavy load that the Memphis Grizzlies are. But no. Hey. Hell no. Bro, I knew Jaron Jackson Jr. wasn't playing well before I even looked at his stats. <coughs> but I'm sick to my stomach after actually looking at his stats. This is downright disgusting. Bro, been making videos with Jester the Laser this summer and Christopher London, LSK. Let's do average 14 points per game, grabbing six rebounds, and shooting 38% from the field. That's what I look like right now. Or that's what I looked like. Actually, predicting that he was gonna average 21 points per game. Six boards? Six? Six rebounds per game? Rookie, Josh Giddy out rebounds you, bro. He's averaging a solid seven. I totally understand that this just could be a super long and early, super normal slump for him. Damian Lillard, for the most part, has not looked like Damian Lillard. He instead has looked like a max contract, super overpaid Raymond Felton. And we all know he's gonna be fine. Just the other night in the making of this video, he scored 39 points. Also, we should all know that good players just don't completely out of the blue do not turn back. Players have bad stretches of games. We all see that all the time. But I'm just hoping that these last few games do not take a rude turn into his career. Dude just got paid a massive bag. A bag that many, including low-key myself, thought that he just didn't deserve. But it's important to keep in mind that he was not paid for what he is right now, but instead for what he could be in the future. Jaron Jackson Jr., man, as y'all saw when I was 18 years old, soon to be 19 years old in the making of that video, that old video, I was a super fan. I wanted him to go ahead and be selected by the Hawks, bro, okay? I wanted him badly. I wanted him in a John Collins backcourt or frontcourt badly. But I'm so happy that I'm not an NBA GM. I'm so happy that I don't work in the back of an NBA office or nothing like that, bro. I'm behind this camera for a reason. So, Memphis Grizzlies fans, if any of y'all are watching this, just know that hey I'm actually going to a Memphis Grizzlies game on December 13th I forgot who y'all are playing but I'm going with my friend slash manager slash <laughs> person I do a podcast with Rudy so go ahead um if you see me at a game tell me what's up and hopefully Jaron Jackson Jr. goes ballistic and drops 45 or 30 that game is less than a month away and also as in the making of this video or as this video is out right now I'm probably going to another game I'm going to an Atlanta Hawks because uh person someone's taken to it right now but she's not listening so anyways um go ahead leave a like comment share subscribe and all that good stuff but outside of everything that i just said i just really do hope that you go ahead and make your day great until then i'll get right with you cool